This is the apartment in Beirut where I live and work. The terrace is its main setting point and you can see from here that you have a fantastic view over the city, over the sea and also over the port. I was sitting on the terrace about an hour before the explosion on the 4th of August but it became too hot so I went into my back room, uh, the spare bedroom, which is cooler, it's uh, protected, uh, it looks out over the garden. And it was there that I was sitting about an hour later when I heard this extraordinary uh, rumbling sound. Richard Spencer is the Times correspondent in Beirut, can join us now. Richard, hello, can you tell us more? There was suddenly an enormous blast wave came through my flat and threw me right across the room. It's hard to see where the epicenter is, but I can see a massive sort of pall of smoke rising over the port area at the moment. The damage is enormous and it's, it's spread um, halfway across the city. Some people said it sounded like jets. Some people said it sounded like a screech. Some people said, like me, it sounded like a sort of boom or an explosion. I obviously thought it was a bomb. Uh, I couldn't work out why anyone would be bombing now. It took me several minutes just to get my act together, to, to get up, to, to dust myself off and put on my shoes and go out and find what was going on. I gradually became aware that many of my friends lived in the blast zone, when, as particularly as I realised how large the blast zone was. So we started checking up on each other. Uh, the, the most severely injured of my friends uh, was unlucky in many ways. She was in a meeting in a large Ottoman era building that overlooks the port. And she had stepped out onto the balcony to take a phone call when the explosion happened. She was speaking to a, to a friend of hers who also lives near the port. And both of them were blown up at the same time. The video with her body still lying in the wreckage of this building. It's quite remarkable to think that she has come away uh, relatively unscathed in the long term, we hope. The blow propelled me through the window back indoor against a wall where I cracked my skull in several places. The last thing I remember is telling Johnny, Johnny, are you at the port? Because he lives at the port. There's something burning there. And I don't remember anything after that for several days. I am angry. I have more anger than... I keep being told I should be grateful, and I realize I should be grateful. It could have been much worse. I should be dead, perhaps, or paralyzed. But gratefulness is not the first thing that comes to me these days. Contrary to Juman, I remember every single moment from the, the explosion, after the explosion. I remember everything. I fell on my head and I remember I put my hands on my head and hoped for the best because I don't, didn't think we were going to survive it. Uh, the blow was uh, tremendous. I, 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 it was so scary. I said, you know, that's it. You know, we're not going to survive that, all of us. I can't even watch TV anymore. I'm so angry. Like her, I'm very angry. And I'm angry at ourselves. How the hell did we vote these people in? We did it. We vote them in. Just around the corner from my apartment is St. George's Hospital, uh, which is one of the biggest hospitals in Beirut, and one of three that was totally destroyed in the explosion. It's about a kilometer from the port, so quite some way away. Uh, but even so, 17 people died here, including three nurses, uh, patients who were in intensive care at the time, and uh, even just people visiting their relatives in hospital. The estimated cost of St. George University Hospital rehabilitation is about 40 to 45 million dollars. The issue is not the fundraising to rehabilitate, it's not the reconstruction, it's how to maintain this organism functioning. For instance, St. George Hospital has at least 1,800 employees. Do you imagine 1,800 people who are actually unemployed and they are still getting their money? 
there is no feeling that the government will certainly be safe to, to fundraise because all the fundraising will go to the pocket to the uh, politician. There is the economic crisis, there is the COVID crisis. Everything is collapsing. Winter is coming, rain is coming. It's, it is a challenge for all those people. So we need a new spirit. I don't know how it will uh, happen. Maybe God will give us the solution, but I don't think that that is the hope. Beirut's a very mixed city. It's got these very wealthy parts in the city centre, and then it's got very working class neighbourhoods, not far from the city centre, but also in the suburbs. And just to the east of the port is, is a traditional working class neighbourhood. It's called Carantina. It's the original place where quarantine was invented, where people from Beirut port would be isolated for fear of disease. So we're in quarantine or Carantina in Arabic, and we're meeting a family of a, a very ordinary guy, a taxi driver, and his flat looks right on to the explosion site. You can see it from his balcony, and his flat has been devastated. But miraculously, neither he nor his family were injured. Because <laughs> وهي خمس دقايق عشر دقايق تقريبا اخذت تقريبا المفرقعات وعارفين انه حد المصودع عم بتقولوا انتم مواد هيدي الكيميائيه واللي بتتفجر ما بعرف شو بيقولوا لها انا بسمع انا شو بيقولوا لها مثل مواد متفجره مثل جاي مثل كيميائي او شيء طب اعطوا انتم اعطوا تسجيلات وساب اعطوا اعلام انه طلعوا اللي قريبين الى طلعوا ليه خليتوا الاطفاجيه ينزلوا كل شب احلى من ثاني من من لبنان بينزلوا يطفوا وراحوا شو بلاش كل شب احلى من الثاني اعتبروه لولادكم انتم بتخلوه لهيك ولا بردكم بامريكا او بفرنسا او ببريطانيا او بالمانيا عم بيشموا الهواء وعم بيعيشوا بيعيش عيشه ملوك ونحن شبابنا نحن هان شبابنا عم بتقتلوها ما شفت انا دوله انا مثل هالدوله ما بتدير بالها على شعبها ولا دوله بتدير بالها على شبابها الا شبابنا بيروحوا بلاش The side wall of Talal sitting room had been completely blown out and the clock had stopped at exactly the moment of the blast, eight minutes past six on the 4th of August. Uh, أو الإنسان المواطن اللي عايشين بلبنان اللي راحوا شهداء من جميع الجنسيات. A state of emergency was declared after the explosion, uh, but that triggered a lot of anger in the city because the army was seen as not having helped out with the rescue effort. But now the the state, the government, has started sending soldiers around to assess the damage and assess uh, the needs for help in repairing houses. One aspect of the explosion that a lot of people have commented on is that it struck right in the heart of the sort of modern cosmopolitan part of Beirut. It's the port, it's in the city centre. Immediately to the south is the Christian area, but part of that area had become a area for cafes, restaurants, museums, trendy modern art galleries. It had become the sort of beating heart of, uh, of the cosmopolitan international city that Beirut always was and was becoming again after the Civil War. I arrived here about a half an hour after the explosion. Um, the scene was, uh, obviously it was chaos. There was people on the streets outside here who were bleeding, trying to find their way to hospital. We had no idea what was going on. Our concern was to make sure that there was nobody buried under the rubble. At that time, I mean, all the way up until now, it was totally volunteer-led, totally led by the people who live in this neighborhood, the people who work here. There were no search parties, no dogs, no firefighters, no army, no, no, no nothing. It was a completely self-driven, self-coordinated effort uh, to save lives. I want to reopen. I believe in this country, but I don't want to reopen like this. I don't want to reopen under the same system, under the same government, under the same people that stole from us, 
that killed us, that blew up our businesses and everything that we worked for. I know they will do it again. I know that this will always be a risk as long as the powers, the leaders of those parties are still controlling this government and this country. There's been a banking crisis, so that means that all the money that we've earned over the years is now stuck in the banks. My life is here, my family is here, everything that I built is in this country. After what happened, you know, I do question whether it's worth it to stay here, like everybody who lives here. I don't know any Lebanese who isn't considering now, at least in some way or another, leaving the country because of what happened. As we discovered, the explosion was caused by 2,750 tonnes of ammonium nitrate, a chemical used as fertiliser but which is also highly explosive. Uh, it had been stored in the port for six years against all safety advice. The effect was terrible. At least 180 people have died. 100,000 homes were damaged, 300,000 of people made homeless. 10,000 businesses were damaged or destroyed by the explosion. 100,000 jobs are at risk as a result of those businesses being damaged. The explosion has really put the focus on the sectarian power sharing system that ended the civil war, but has looked increasingly moribund as Lebanon has failed to modernize, failed to institute good government standards. And so people are asking whether the clear up operation in the port should actually extend to the system as a whole.